Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here and welcome to episode 7 of Stage Learning. In between episodes, I was incredibly busy and I did more than I said I was going to do. And uh, yeah, I said I was only going to do a mining run, but after the mining run, I figured I need a place to store all of the stuff I'm getting. So I have a bunch of Yaba barrels here holding uh, all of the ore when I get it in here. And the stuff that can't go inside the crusher and the sieve over there, I'm throwing in here. So stuff like the coal... Stuff like the Electrotine. Uh, I have the Certus Quartz. Yeah, all that type of stuff is sitting in a barrel. The rest of it went through the machines. And then I have storage drawers. Specifically, compacting drawers. Holding all of the ingots and all of the blocks. Just because I thought it would be easier. Uh, so that means I have an item barrel connector right here. And I have a drawer controller right here. The, uh, the reason why I have this hopper here is because... The item barrel connector, it's not like the drawer controller. You can't right click it and everything that's in your inventory will go into the drawers. If I try to right click the item barrel connector, I'll right click it and yeah, you see it's just going to open up a configuration of all of the barrels that are attached to that controller. So I have a hopper and a chest here because every time I throw like coal in, the coal will take out a stack here. Yeah, the coal will start feeding into the barrel connector and it will work the same way as a storage drawer controller but yeah like i said i hooked up all of the uh machines so i have the oh pardon me i have the hydraulic press over here and i have an inserter and an outserter <laughs> oh wow i'm sorry uh a conveyor belt moving everything into this chest here and then it's pretty much the same exact configuration i had over at the over in the plains biome when I started out. So yeah, no, nothing really out of the ordinary here. However, because of the amount of resources I have, I made four more wind turbines and I have connected them all with power poles and transformers just so the power never drops. And all of the stuff that I had going through both the crusher and the sieve, never once did I drop below 125 volts. So it's working perfectly. Uh, especially when I have all four machines and the hydraulic press running at the same time, as well as my electric furnaces that I have over here, I will never drop below 125 volts. So you can imagine how pleased I am with that. Um, but yeah, in this episode, what we're going to do is we are finally going to finish the boring pump jack, the oil heater, and the refinery, as well as some other uh, magnetic craft power options. We're also going to set those up, things like the solar tower, uh, yeah, so the solar tower and solar mirrors are going to help power that pump jack because I need a constant supply of RF going into it or joules going into it in order to make all of the oil I need to move on. So yeah, that's what we're going to do in this episode. And without further ado, let's get to it. I take that back. We still have some uh, YouTube comments that we need to go over. So after the end of the last episode, I noticed that we have cosmetic armor in the pack, which means I can throw in a secondary set of armor for the looks only. I can't take advantage of the stats of this. So that defense eight right there, I cannot take advantage of that defense eight. I'm still only going to be dealing with the defense 13. Uh, however, the look of this armor set is now what my primary look is. I can take off the helmet and you'll see that it's going to default to the Ardite helmet. This set right here is copper as a base and then it is iron trim and Ardite. Correction, uh, Ardite trim and iron plates. I also went through and changed it so that there are by default 25 modifiers on a set of armor. So I had to remake this set of armor right here, and this set of armor now has the uh, the 25 modifiers. I applied those modifiers so that uh, these are now unbreakable. And then Red Rufio, after that, uh, made a comment that I could use cosmetic armor to hide the goggle look that I don't like very much, or the fact that it's purple now. Let's take this off. Yeah, you see that I am pretty much all purple because of the unbreakable modifiers which just looks so ugly. But yeah, we have the cosmetic armor on. I look spiffy clean, and I really like that. Also, Mugavin brought up that I can... That's a bad example. Find a chest. Mugavin brought up that I can use a scroll wheel in order to take items in and out of chests instead of shift-clicking, or what I have been doing is taking it out and, like, right-clicking, taking what I need, and then throwing the rest back in. 
Uh, Mugavan suggested that I just use the scroll wheel, and I've, I've known about this for a while. I just don't like using it. I don't know why. I, there's no really real rhyme or reason to it. It's just, it feels off using the scroll wheel to take items and put them back in. So I won't be using that. However, Mugavan is absolutely right. That is an option instead of doing the very... I guess adding the extra steps of the right clicking, oh I need 12 of these, so there we go, put that back in, when I could have just scrolled to 12 instead. Uh, so yeah, Mugavan, thank you very much for that suggestion, and I hope that other people take advantage of it, but it's not really a process that's for me. So yeah, now we'll continue on with the episode. So we're just about ready with all of the piece parts that we need to make the boring pump jack. Here we go, and small fluid hatch. We have the small energy input hatch. And we have the machine controller. The last thing that I'm going to need is gold. Yep, here we go, they are complete. So we need these striped machine blocks. We need 18 of them. Right here, oh, add more. There we go, striped machine blocks complete, and that should be the entire quest, so we can get the machine blueprint for the blowing pump jack and a portable tank. So let's find out a good place to put this, and uh, it should probably be, uh, oh no, I need to take into account where I'm going to have the rest of the machines as well, so we will place it, I don't even know where the energy input's going to be, yeah, we'll place it right here. All right, it is a three by three on here on top. Cool. So one thing I do not like about modular machines is the fact that when you want the blueprint to be placed, it will the blueprint will always be facing north. I cannot rotate it. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take that into account. Man, yeah, I want the controller to be facing south. Instead, it's facing north because that is the default position of modular machines, and I do not know how to rotate that. But, alright, yeah, it looks like everything is pretty much the same. Uh, what does the inside look like? Alright, yeah, this won't be difficult at all. All I need to do is just place down the striped machine blocks, and I can rotate, kind of like how I did with the crusher over there. If I want to change its position, there are only two blocks I need to manage. Well, there are three blocks for this structure. So that is no problem at all. We will place down the machine controller right here. And uh, I cannot tell. All right, so this has green on it, which means the energy input hatch is on the left, which means energy input hatch will be on the left here. And the, f there we go, fluid output hatch right there. And now everything else should speak for itself. So we'll get out those machine blocks. All right, there we go. Structure found. Boring pump jack. We're going to throw in the blueprint. So blueprint found. Boring pump jack. Status, not enough energy. Oh yeah, I should probably clear the blueprint, shouldn't I? Boom. All right. So now all I need to do is supply this thing with power. So the tooltip right here does say that magnetic craft power can be used for this machine. So I have an electrical connector and I have the copper coil and we will connect it right here. Awesome. It looks connected. Oh, and I'm already having a graphical glitch with it, but it's look at that progress. So the power is working just fine. It is making me some crude oil. All I need to do is go get a fluid pipe so I can transfer it into that uh, that tank that it gave me. Here we are, iron pipes. All right, so all I need is, uh, I'm gonna have to make a lot more for this episode, holy. All right, well, put that right here. Get out my wrench. There we go, all right. So, I have oil flowing in here. I'm getting a lot more oil than I thought I would. So I'm gonna have to make the oil heater very, very quickly. Uh, I completely missed the note. I wasn't expecting the notification to pop up saying the beginning was complete. But, oh man, it doesn't even show up here. 
In any case, I have completed the beginning by uh, getting all of the piece parts available for the oil heater and the refinery. I am not going to move on just yet. I'm not even sure where the beginning... This is three, three rewards, but where is the third reward? One, two... I have nothing else showing right here. So let's collect these rewards and see if anything pops up. Oh, okay. So it counted because there are two rewards right here. It counted this as two rewards. All right, that's good to know. I had no idea that it, did, that it acted like that. But now that I have everything I need, which is a lot of corrugate iron and at least 64 support columns, we're going to set up our two new structures right here next to our modular machinery. Since we're here, I may as well go over the support columns. I used a couple when I was making the hydraulic press, specifically the ones on top need to be on a horizontal axis. But normally, whenever you place them, they're on the Y axis. So if I try to place them right here, you'll see the hologram remains. It wants these support columns on an X axis, which is really easy to do because all you have to do is just Treat it as if it was a, uh, a piece of wood. Depending on which way you want to place it, it will adjust its axis accordingly. And that could be a little frustrating if you're trying to, uh, in the case of the hydraulic press, all four, uh, correction, all three of the blocks on top are on the X axis. So I have nothing to place against. And once again, if it was just like an oak log, all you have to do is place it into the sky as high as you want. And there we go. I have... My support columns on an x-axis there we go so yeah it can uh, be a little confusing because like you uh, like you saw when I placed a y-axis support column the hologram remained and it can be a little confusing as to what that actually means but since the hologram remains even though you have the support column there that means it wants it on a different axis so that's what that means and now we can continue so I have just about everything set up right now. I have an electric heater hoping that it is going to heat up my oil heater. But as you see, it is not. The reason being is because I cannot put the electric heater right next to this multi-block and have it work. Because the heat, let's mine this out right here. The heat goes in the bottom. And that is a little unfortunate, but it's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. So, this heater right in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some heat pipes, also from Magnetic Craft, and they're really easy to make. There's a double copper plate, some iron ingots, and there's also an insulated variant, which I am going to make after this clip. And all you have to do is just put some bricks in there, or use the heat pipes and put some bricks in there. So the insulated heat pipe are going, is just going to keep me from getting hurt. But yeah, let's put down this heat pipe. There, you see. It has connected... To the oil heater and uh, you saw that uh, it got a little red there for a second all right the heat went down because it's not transferring the heat very well but that's fine all I need to do is wait for this heat to rise again and eventually these pipes are going to get hot you see that I just touched it and it hurt me and also looking at here you can see that the temperature is raising once the temperature reaches uh oh man I forget what it was once the temperature reaches a specific point, the mod default is 600 Celsius, but I can't convert Celsius to Fahrenheit off the top of my head. But yeah, once this gets high enough, what this is going to do is it's going to heat up. Oh no, my output filled up with uh, oil as well. Son of a gun, I'm going to have to fix that before we continue. But that's fine. The way that I have the pipes configured is it's kind of a given that that was going to happen because... If I try to route this pipe over and then down, it's obviously going to connect with this iron pipe, and you can disconnect it with the magnetic craft wrench, no problem. But if I had this iron pipe connected to here, this is one of the refinery's outputs. So I would have had uh, I would have had the hot oil going into an output of the refinery instead. So yeah, just be careful how you set your iron pipes. And oh yeah, look at that. You see that the pipes are getting redder and redder. We're at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And yeah, I'm going to fix this uh, fl this oil is in the output real quick. 
They'll be back with you once we're making some hot crude. Well, I completely missed it, but uh, yeah, you see that I have made a whole bunch of hot crude and it got to about 600 degrees Fahrenheit before it started making that, which is weird because it should be 600 Celsius. Yeah, this tooltip says 600 degrees Celsius. That's very weird. Anyway, so I have the hot crude. Oh no, and of course oil went into this input as well. Well, looks like we have another thing we need to fix. All right, there we go. We have the hot crude inside of our refinery, but we need one more input and that is steam. So I have a solution for the steam and that is this machine over here. Let's complete it. And this is the bigger steam boiler. All I have to do is add in water and heat and it will produce me steam and I can output the steam into this multi-block. However, if I'm going to uh, get a lot of steam, then I'm going to need quite a bit of heat and that is what this multi-block is for. This is the solar tower and there are also, oh, I'm sorry about the, uh, I have a lot of stuff going on in here right now, so my, uh, my twitch is back. But what I have right here is the solar tower and the solar tower operates with the use of solar mirrors to generate heat. This isn't like a typical solar whatever and there is a solar panel in this mod, but I didn't bother using it. Yeah, here it is, solar panel. So anyway, this will produce me heat, a lot of heat. And uh, in order for it to produce heat for me, I need, oh. Oh, you kidding me right now? All right, that's a problem. I'm gonna have to replace a couple torches, but that's fine. So get rid of that torch. And last one. All right, so these solar mirrors right here, now that I have them configured, all I have to do is press this button and you'll see that they just angled themselves towards the tower and I am generating quite a bit of heat. I need to take care of this heat rather quickly or else the solar tower is capable of melting down and it will turn entirely into lava. So I already have heat pipes leading all the way over to, oh actually I don't have it going over to the boiler. I do have it going over to this multi-block right here just because it's going to be a better source of heat for me anyway. And uh, yeah, let's configure our heat pipes. I have the insulated heat pipes right here and right here, right here. And there we go. All right, so my heat pipes are now connected. The heat is going down because it is transferring through the pipes. Let's see how it's doing over here. All right, it's starting to raise. Awesome, it seems like we have a good thing going for us. Now the only thing I need to do is reroute um, right here. There we go, all right, now I'm going to have heat coming from this heat pipe over to here. Yes. There we go, all right, heat is starting to raise, so all I need to do is put water inside here, and water is really simple. I know there are no visible inputs on this boiler, however, it is just as simple as putting an iron pipe in here, and see that the water is starting to flow in. Once the heat reaches a certain level, then it will start producing me steam, and I can output the steam via the top into my refinery. All right, so I have transferred the steam into my refinery and I've kind of made a mistake. I had the hot crude in here and I had it in my brain that the hot crude was going to make the three items I need in order to progress, the gasoline, the diesel, and the kerosene. Uh, I was so very wrong. Uh, the hot crude is making me heavy oil, light oil, and LPG. The gasoline, kerosene, and diesel are being made with the light oil so i need to make another refinery and transfer the light oil into it but i did not budget the time for this episode in order to do that so in the very beginning of the next episode i'm going to have a refinery constructed and we will transfer the light uh, the light oil into another refinery but in the meantime i did add some more solar mirrors and you see that they're transferring right now and it is making me a lot more heat but unfortunately that heat is not transferring very quickly over here, so I still need that 600 Fahrenheit to continue, uh, continuously make the hot crude. 
But other than that, oh, let's get rid of you. Other than that, everything is working the way that it should. So let's go over here. Not enough tank space for the fluid output. That's perfectly fine. It is making me the crude oil. Crude oil is going in here. Oh, and now that we've reached 600 Fahrenheit, let's look over at our refinery. Okay, why is hot crude not leaving? All right, so it is making the hot crude. It got, it got up to 670. But the hot crude is not leaving and going in here, which it absolutely should. I have it on an output. Why is the hot crude not leaving? I am not sure what's going on, so I'm going to troubleshoot a little bit more. All right, so I solved the problem by just putting in one of the portable tanks as a standby. So what it does is it outputs into this portable tank, and then this portable tank outputs into here, and that seems to be working. I don't know why just using the pipe by itself isn't working anymore, but since this is working, I guess we're going to leave it like this. Uh, but I am ready to close out this episode, and wow, those are some hot pipes. Yeah, I'm ready to close out this episode. In between episodes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up that extra refinery, and I'm going to take the light oil out of this refinery, and these are the outputs right here. And I guess I need to make another portable tank. What is the recipe for a portable tank? Oh, I don't even have, I don't have thermal unlocked. I can't make any more tanks. Oh, no. All right, so we are, uh, I think the Magnetocraft tanks can probably hold them. So, yeah, tank. Yeah, I think these small Magnetocraft tanks will be able to hold it, no problem. So we're going to try that out as well. Yeah, in the next episode, we're going to take that light oil, we're going to convert it into the buckets of stuff we need to progress, and we're going to get on with industrial research. So I am Kelly Engineering. I hope that you did enjoy this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.